What is it you tolerate? My mentor asked me this question last week and it got me thinking of two particular areas of my life. My self-awareness and my self-management. If you don't understand what that means, essentially, what am I aware of that I do or that others do to me? Self-awareness. And self-management, simply put, how do I manage myself? In a particular place, in a particular area, am I conducting myself in an orderly manner? Am I acting out of character? Am I conforming to a certain level? How am I managing myself? Welcome back to another discussion. My name is Jurgen Chefru, and here we talk about personal development from A to Z. That might look like learning how to achieve goals or look like understanding yourself on a deeper level. If you're new here, press subscribe and I'm sure you're going to enjoy the rest of this video. I started with the conversation of what my mentor said. What do you tolerate? And that type of question really opened up a lot about myself that maybe I didn't realise because, you know, we go through life. We have friends, we have family, we do things habitually. We laugh in a certain way, we interact in a certain way with this type of personnel. Yet, what is it we tolerate in terms of what does that mean for us in our lives? But when my mentor asked me this question, he further explained that what do these things that you tolerate mean to you in your life? Something for you to answer. Because ultimately what you tolerate is what you take. Like a pain threshold, you can only take so much pain before you have to step away. You can only push so hard before you have to step back. What is it you tolerate? To help you even further, let me ask you this. Personal behaviour and consequences. You acting like this, you behaving in a certain way, what is the consequence of that? Both negative and positive. Because you're more catering and more caring to these type of friends and less so to these type of friends, what effect has that had in your life? Because you neglect a part of your life but focus on another part of your life, whether this is neglecting your health and focusing on money, whether this neglecting your education and focusing on other achievements, what is the effect of that? I'm not judging you, I'm not saying you're doing the wrong thing, but this is the time to clarify it, understand it, see it on a clear view to help you manage it, self-management. You know what, I'm going to add another word there, self-deception. In other words, we have tendencies as human beings to focus on things that support our beliefs, that make us feel, oh yeah, I am saying the right thing, I am doing the right thing because this told me so. That might be contrary to what actually is helping you, but that self-deception happens regardless of it being positive or negative. You clicked on this video because of the title, the thumbnail, that if you continue to lie to yourself, everyone will continue to use you. That self-deception comes in many forms of lying to yourself. Oh, I'll work out tomorrow. Oh, I'll start this tomorrow. That's one way. Another way is, ah, oh, they're not that bad. You know, you just have a bit of fun. That's lying to yourself again. Another way is, I can't do this, I'll never be amount to this. That's lying to yourself once more. You're not deeply facing the ugly truth behind and hidden of your feelings, boundaries or proximity. Wait, even better, your worth. You neglect it, you push it aside, you, you no longer give it value. So if that's the case, who will? <laughs> Others? Other people are meant to give you, make you feel better. Other people are there to restore what was lost. Other people are there to close your wounds. Other people are there to comfort you instead of you taking responsibility, you acknowledging your truth, you acknowledging what's actually happened to no longer be masked and covered by yourself to yourself. I wanted to have this discussion with you based on the effects you have on yourself. <laughs> you can make yourself believe something and you can make yourself deter from another thing. Do you notice when you believe in something because you already have that internal belief? Or do you notice when you deter from something else because it doesn't conform with your values, your beliefs, or mental attitude? That type of self-awareness, that type of self-management reveals thought patterns, behaviour patterns, feeling patterns that you might not have realised before. That can help you develop personal development. That can help you grow reaching new goals. That can help you understand your past, healing properly. So there's a real element of vulnerability. How vulnerable can you be with yourself? Of course, you might be the one to be strong, to never cry around others, to hold it in. But when you're by yourself, it might be a different story. You might be the one to never even let out anything out. But later on, when something happens, it triggers it. When you see this or when you're in this position, this environment, it triggers it again. Bringing those feelings, thoughts and emotions. So how vulnerable can you be yourself to ask yourself, what am I saying to myself that is truth and that is a lie? What am I feeding myself that is in accordance to Oh yeah, if it's this way, it's the correct way and anything else doesn't work. Am I open-minded? Am I closed-minded? Am I working on myself in a truth, truthful form that abides to growth? Not being stagnant in, if it works out, that means it's for me. But why didn't it work out? What can I learn? Adapting beyond. If it's not happening, it's not working out. That's it. If you continue to lie to yourself, others will continue 
to use you. It's a strong statement to catch your call, to hold you accountable to who you are, to what you do, to why you do it, and for yourself to see your truth. <sighs> but let's take a break. If you're enjoying this, make sure you press subscribe. Let us continue. So let's discuss on what you can do moving forward. There's different things, right? Of course, there's practical elements. I can say, do this, do this, and do that. But there's the other side to that, where it's self-reflection, taking time after this video to process your feelings and thoughts. Let's focus on that. So one thing this conversation we're having makes me think of is that cloud judgment, where you think, what is true? Like, what am I actually saying that I believe? What am I saying or doing that I'm just following? Cloud judgment means it needs to be cleared up. Cloud judgment means it needs to be distinguished in, is this from an external source? Or is this internally what I actually believe? Is this something that I would value if it was said to me? And that purely takes looking within. Of course, next time you have a conversation, for example, with somebody, you can look at the words you say, you can look at the behaviors and the mannerisms you have, and you can talk in your mind and yourself and be conscious and aware of, oh, I wouldn't usually laugh at this joke, or I usually wouldn't be so frantic, or I usually wouldn't be so laid back with them or with her or him. Because I'm in that situation, I have to act a certain way. Is that truthful to who I am? Or is that just me playing a character a part for them? That's for you to answer. Creating distinction to clear that cloudy judgment. The second part to moving forward is self-control. As I had previously stated about the habits we embark on when we interact, when we, as we work, as we talk to ourselves, in uptaking new habits, in uptaking a new form, in doing new things essentially, we are now attuning ourselves to a new way, a new pattern, a new way of thinking, doing, so on and so forth. As we do that, your mind constantly needs reassuring and remembrance of this is now who I am. I no, I no longer act in this way or behave in this way. Then that strengthens your self-control in being the more truthful person you are. You may notice that you talk less. You may notice that you talk more. You may notice that you're less extravagant and you may notice that you, you listen more. But if they're more powerful for you to say the exact words that you, you mean with full conviction, how much more of an adventure would that be? How much more impactful would you be to others in your life? Speaking your truth, your worth, your know-how and listening so deeply that you answer with your full presence. You work with your full presence. How does that sound? And that brings me on to the last thing to reflect on. Take responsibility as if it is your own. You know, I was recently reading Jordan B. Peterson's book, 12 Rules of Life, where he essentially describes people would rather look after their dogs, their pets, better than they would look after themselves. How? Why? We have our own lives. We need to make sure we eat. We need to make sure we've got roof over our head. We've got water. We're looking after our family, our friends. But yet, we'll look after them better than we'll look after ourselves. Do you think that's true? Do you think you put others before yourself? Do you think that you place things on a pedestal above yourself? And what would be the difference if that was to change? If you became first in your life, in making sure you're okay, physically, mentally, spiritually and emotionally, to make sure that you're moving forward, to make sure you've got your things of life in order, your health, your finances, your career, your relationships, your personal well-being and development. What would change? What would be different? How would you act differently? Well, how would you think differently? What would you see differently about your life? And that might be more truthful than you are today. That's what I'm gonna to leave today's video. Did it provide some clarity? That's what I want to know. Let me know in the comments. If it did, as I said, subscribe if you're new. Like the video if you liked it. My name is Jerk and Chef. Have a good day, morning, night, or evening. And check out these two videos here. YouTube thinks you'll like them. My name is Jerk and Chef once more. And I'll see you next week for our next discussion.